There are three types of brand names that the human mind is biased towards remembering above others. If you're starting a new business, a new line of products, a program, a podcast, anything that can potentially become a brand, then you want to use one of these three types of brand names to set yourself up for success and give yourself every possible advantage. Also, there are more than 300 million businesses in the world right now. So when you're picking a brand name, you need to make sure that it communicates your values, helps you stand out, and is not just nice but rather really memorable and impossible to forget. In this video, I'm going to share the science behind the truly iconic and timeless brand names that stand out from everyone else and then share the practical step-by-step -step way that you can come up with a brand name like that for your brand. Let's start. First, it's a lot easier to remember names that are short and simple, especially when they are used by people who speak different languages. So you can use acronyms, initialisms, or combine letters from different words to create your name. Um, this works especially well for companies in the finance, government, and wholesale sectors. For example, Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing Company renamed itself 3M Innovation to go global. Stockwell and Cohen took the letters from their names for their supermarket chain and called it Tesco. Second, the mind remembers with rhythm. Names are sounds in our minds way before they are printed letters. So choose a name that sounds good to say out loud. This especially works great if your name can have a repetitive pattern or a rhythm in the phonetics. This is actually backed by science. Our minds have a system for memory called a phonological loop, which is that when you hear a sound, it kind of stays in your brain for a while and it decides whether to record it into long-term memory or to throw it out. So if the sound keeps Keeps bouncing around for a while, then it is much more likely to get recorded into long-term memory. So naturally, anything with a rhyme or rhythm is just more sticky in the mind and is much more likely to be recorded into long-term memory. There are so many iconic brands that are built on this principle. Coca-Cola, PayPal, Bed Bath & Beyond, Dunkin Donuts, Krispy Kreme. They all use words that start with the same letter to give it a rhythm. You can also do this with made-up words like Kit Kat. It doesn't always have to start with the same letters to have a rhythm. You could also just use rhyming words like in the case of this famous British bakery, Bread Ahead. Another way to create a catchy name is to focus not on the rhythm but rather on the phonetics and how satisfying it feels to say the name out loud. There is a common pattern of a lot of successful internet companies using double O in their names like Google, Facebook, Yahoo um, and even Microsoft. This is because the letter O is a very distinct sound when you say it out loud and it's a very distinct vowel in the English language. Two O's in a word often softens the other letters around it so again, it sounds nicer to say out loud. Finally, the mind remembers words that it can associate with things that it already knows or it can associate with concepts that can incite a feeling. So you can choose a name based on something that you want your brand to be associated with, like a philosophy or a benefit of use or a solution to a problem. For example, Nike is named after the winged goddess of victory. The logo is a symbol for the goddess's wing and the swish symbolizes motivation, power and speed. There's also something about a check mark that we just intuitively associate with um, accomplishing a task or a goal. Another more niche example is a cleaning company here in Dubai called I Hate Cleaning.ae. Their tagline is We love the work you hate. Their name is literally a solution to a problem and it's a service for people who don't like to clean their own space. And it's really memorable because it uses easy words, but it's bold and it has a personality. Unconscious associations like this are a very powerful tool, so you should definitely use them in your own names. Now that you know the key principles of a great name, here's an exercise that you can practically do to generate a lot of ideas for your own brand name. You're going to need a pen and paper or you can just use your phone to answer the following questions. Number one, describe what your business does or what your product is in the simplest way possible. Number two, write a list of feelings that you want your customer to feel when using your products. For example, if you're an insurance company, then you want your customers to feel trust when they communicate with you. If you're a sportswear brand, then you probably want your customers to feel motivated, driven, and like they can accomplish 
accomplish anything. Number three, does your brand have any influence that could be in the name? For example, if it originated in a place with a landmark or if it's been influenced by a person or an aesthetic or a lifestyle. Finally, what other words could you use to describe your business? For example, I can call my bakery Rabia's Bakery, but I can also call it all these other things. Now, you should have a lot of relevant words that you can play with to generate a lot of business names. As a rule of thumb, if you're trying to make a brand that you want to be timeless and classic, then avoid using cute or funny names because they don't really translate well, um, especially in different cultures. You can be straightforward and pick a name that literally describes what your business does, like American Airlines or Cartoon Network or Hotels.com. What they do is literally in the name. Or you can combine different parts of different words to come up with a completely new name for your brand. For example, Pinterest is called that because you digitally pin the things that you are interested in. Similarly, Netflix is you watching flicks on the internet. Compound word names like this are automatically unique and so really easy to remember and also usually quite easy to register and copyright. Also, don't forget to use the principles that I talked about at the start of the video. If you're choosing um, and narrowing down between a few different brand names, then always choose the one that is short, simple, and also the most fun and satisfying to say out loud. Good luck with naming your brand. Thank you so much if you watched all the way to the end. I really hope you found this video useful and see you in the next one.